Yes, and I'm going to <laughs> keep sitting down. That's this fine. Nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, standardization within e-cigarettes and try to appeal to a lot of you to get involved in this. Because Europe at the moment has four working groups on standards for e-cigarettes. The first one is vocabulary, uh, which is the last standard that will ever be done because all of the other groups will fill into that. The first one, the second one is hardware. What are the standards for hardware? What does child safety mean? What, what, uh, how does it have to be glass? And what material has, does it have to be made of? And we really, really, really need lots of vapors there involved in these kinds of discussions because the industry doesn't really know that much. <laughs> in the working groups, Norbert, Norbert uh, from Germany and I had to explain how vaping actually works, even to vape companies. And, and that's the bad news, that the, the tobacco companies are new to this. That's yes, okay. and they know and they, it. But they are the most, and they are the most, the most working people over there, but the vaping yeah. companies have no clue and have no, they, they are not willing to work on it. Correct. That, that's bad, yeah. Problems so, vaping uh, companies send sometimes seem to send only people uh, categorized for their ability to speak English. Yeah, or for yeah. selling products. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The third group is uh, liquid manufacturing and uh, standards for labels and so on. The fourth one is uh, actually Pelosa's group, yeah. which is on emissions. But and I know that some of you are going to think this is only Europe. But the European standards will probably be taken into the US if we can produce them quickly enough. They will be taken up everywhere else. For instance, the Canadians have asked to be observers of this process. Because they know they will need standards. Uh, on top of this, there's the ISO uh, level, uh, the International Standard Organization. But at the moment, they're only concerned about particular methods to measure particular things. For instance, I think the first working group is uh, how do we measure the con t content of nicotine, PG, and VG. Am I correct? You, you are correct so far, and the, the most interesting thing is the fight of the companies, the measuring companies, for having the, the vaping machine test standards, mm -hmm. that they are the only ones to produce vaping test machines. Yes, they, that's, that's the their interest. They want to be the company who produces the ideal or the, the only standard vaping test machine. Yeah. And that's for their, their reason to be there. And Every one of you has a standard organization in your country. Try to figure out how you can become part of that. Try to get on the, uh, on the standard for ISO 127, for instance, uh, SC3, which is e-cigarettes. The, the bad news in that case is that it's always costing money. Not because always. Not always. Not quite, a lot of quite a lot of countries <laughs> will support consumer groups who want to take part in it. Uh, for instance, Denmark will. Uh, Germany yes. has a free ride on the standardization board. So it's not, it not, it's not necessarily a very expensive thing except in time, because you will need to work. Uh, but think about it, those standards will determine how the future looks. And the tobacco companies are, at the moment are the majority of positions in, within those standard, standardizations. And I think most big companies don't even know that how important it is. Mm. Yeah. 
So be there. be there. Try to be there. And to follow up on that, before governments start producing standards for aromas or saying that you can't do it yourself, Inco has proposed that we make a, we try to, with in collaboration with the industry, try to make a, a what is called an industry standard, but not within the normal functions. That we can get a mark on every liquid bottle, that this is produced according to the best available things. In Sweden, you know, that there's one mark. Something like that for e-liquids. And there's we're no rather, rather far ahead with that. Well, basically, there's no need to because the, the, the law itself, or the, the directive itself, says you have to take the best available products inside. Yes, but, 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 but at the moment, for aromas, for aromas, it's food grade. And food grade just says that uh, it has to apply to that. And that doesn't say anything about lipids in the aromas. And lipids are not good. So, and we, so we need something specifically for the aromas that we need within e-liquids. Yeah? I'm that subject. First of all, if you were to send also your local normalization, because you can go to, like he was to, to, to send, you can also go to, um, to, go to your local normalization, uh, which votes the send on ISO. Uh, which is important as well. Uh, all the so uh, go to for, for European, but not only European, because uh, ISO meetings uh, count as well. If any country go, if any user representative go to the its country's uh, normalization organization. Uh, they can participate to vote in uh, SEN or if they are European or uh, ISO on um, and it's uh, another way on going to, to SEN or to ISO is, is very important as well, a bit more complicated, uh -huh. sometimes costly. Uh, and for, for e-liquids, if you want uh, to promote at least anywhere in Europe, in other places it, it works as well, the, uh, uh, the quality standard. Uh, Sen, Sen will not do aromas. They will not. No, no, uh, and I, I don't think we want them to. No, no. no really. No. But uh, <laughs> if you want to promote uh, a marking that uh, qualifies the, the quality of the e liquids and the information about this liquid to the consumer, mm -hmm. you've got the AFNOR certification. No, 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 no. Because that's only for liquids with nicotine. No, not at all. Uh, the AFNOR certification implies using AFNOR normalization on e-liquids fabrication, which mm -hmm. includes uh, uh, some procedures to, to use the correct ingredients and avoid a very bad one. And there is a marking that is promoted, which is very important uh, for consumers, of course. Which one is that? Sorry, I have to question here. Which which what ethanol thing are we talking about? Here? Certification on that. Number no. number what? The, the, uh, the certification one, two, is something apart from. Uh, it's not the normalization. What. There, there is a after normalization which is also provided uh -huh. uh, as uh, elements for SEN uh, normalization. But there is a, a, a Afnor certification company, which is uh, with Afnor, of course, and they're certified that you respect Afnor rules for e-liquids, not for emission and uh, hardware, but for e-liquids, which implies using the normalization, of course, uh, on some uh, process, some regularity in your process, some quality system in the company, and things like that, which is a, a, a good starting. Right. Uh, high quality point, yes. starting point for a company that uh, provides liquids. Mm -hmm. And it's ready made. So there is a marking, there is communication, and there are rules on process, on uh, auditing uh, companies uh, that can provide uh, the audit part of it, which is useful. Yes, and, and, the, and you will have the same thing for SEM. 
but but yeah. you can use the processes that will be developed within no, 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 working group No, it's a norm. It's not a, you, you can't uh, mark your product uh, on no, I know, company I know. certified. I know, but, but an FNOR marking will not work in Denmark. Yes, it will. No, it won't. <laughs> because because the Danish government won't respect that mark. I mean, I don't, I you don't need an international mark for this. Uh, it's really the, the marketing of the thing. If, oh, yeah, if you I want don't, to I'm market, not we use uh, a correct product, product, mm -hmm. and then sales will not be that much. Of course. Yeah. But what we're proposing is an international mark that could go on e liquids. Everywhere. That will be enforced by some international go uh, governing organ, which will not be INCO, but will be something that INCO creates with the industry. That would be very good. Yeah. Yes. Article? Would you like to talk about it? Should I talk about it? Yes, please. Oh, that's 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 a standard could also be that you can't put these things in it. Isn't there a danger doing that, that by applying those standards that it could limit flavors? Yes, there is, and that's why it's better to have a non-standardization non, uh, organ make it. Because now, on the other hand, there, there are flavors. Thing like, yeah. There are flavors which shouldn't be inside an e-cigarette like diacetyl, sure. for example. So a, a blacklist is uh, not, the, not the worst way. Mm. A whitelist would be a really bad way. Yeah. Yeah. So it's actually stuff like cinnamon, for instance. I, don't think, yeah. I think it was cinnamon that's been widely reported. So, you know, if you just literally had something that, in effect, there were scientific, enough studies that said, in effect, it's not worth the risk, and therefore we, as a standard, that will not be put into something. And it's not very technical. I don't understand standards to that to your level, obviously. But but I'd like to think that there was no cinnamon flavour. If in fact, and it seems to me uncontrovertible that in effect it's not good. Yeah. One last question, Natalie. I wanted to uh, testimony uh, to add something to Claude said. Uh -huh. I'm not sure I understood everything because of my lack of uh, English. Uh, but I want to testify about what's happened in France because I think it's very interesting. It's not a Concorico, it's just a very good example. We had this work done in AFNOR uh, two or three years ago and it was a very long work. And uh, we had the consumers who participated in it, we had the uh, professional who participated and we had also the uh, health professional. And these uh, norms are very, very interesting and very well balanced. So, of, I, of course, I agree. I agree. Den Denmark can have some problems to admit French no, no, norms, no, 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 no. and every country and England wants its own. Can I, wants its own can I norms. break in and you will get to speak again? What AFNOR did was brilliant, and it started the whole standardization process. Yes, so but I think you started it too soon, unfortunately. What, what consumers <laughs> can do, maybe that's interesting, is pushing their local uh, organizations mm -hmm. to reuse yeah. that because there is lots of work in it. Yeah. And I hear that lots of uh, organizations want to reinvent this and maybe with the lack of knowledge as uh, the German uh, said. So my, my advice is to, re to, to reuse that. But we can't anymore. Sorry? The trouble that we can't anymore. The trouble is that you start the process too soon. Once you make the first FNOR standard, yes. the European standard started up. Yes. FNOR 2 and 3 yes. will never become norms in other countries. They can't. Okay, that's, so how, that's how the whole legal system works on that. Yes, yes. okay, but I mean you had local norms on, uh, at the end that take into account. Yeah, but they can't. Yeah. They can't. They can not even you know, use general that. Problem, general problem, if somebody is doing a, a walk alone, is that other people or other states are not exactly 400% on your side. That means if AFNOR would, would want to be a European standard, it has to talk 
uh, with the other countries before and not making, regardless how good the job is, making the job alone and then present it. Uh, especially the, pro uh, the Germans <laughs> uh, are then saying, okay, it's not our work, uh, we don't like it. <laughs> and yes, the British, and the that. British, of course, too. Yes, I understand that, but I mean, is it can be an advantage for the consumers to, to reuse a part of that has been done. Of course, uh, you need to do it, and uh, as in France, uh, we can take for granted what the PHE uh, works. I know it works everywhere like this, and yeah. even if it's a shame. We unfortunately but have to cut it off because yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really interesting to try to get this norm no, into your skin. But I understand that what I'm talking about is certification, it's not the norm. Mm -hmm. So when SEN will finish its uh, second uh, the, the liquid part mm -hmm. uh, standardization, it will come back to France as a standard yeah. and it will be what is certified. Yeah. Within that that country, yes. the, the point is the capacity, the industrial capacity to certify something, to provide information on top of this something to the consumer yeah. and to brand it as it's, it's not only applied or regulatory, it's verified. Yeah. 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 And the certification is that, it has nothing to do with what is certified. Oh, thanks everybody. We have to carry on your icon. Right.